Welcome back. This is Morning Live. Every year on the 22nd of March, uh, it is World Water Day, which places uh, a spotlight on the importance of water. And this year's theme is water and climate change. Well, our next guest is 28-year-old uh, Dr. Uh, Bahangwere Masindi, researcher scientist in water science and technology and is based at Mahali's Water. He now joins us via Skype uh, to share more on the importance of uh, water preservation and his uh, current ongoing project. Doctor, it's great to have you on uh, the show. Thank you so much uh, for staying um, connected as we battle through this uh, technology that can sometimes be problematic. Now, we're currently faced with COVID-19, and one of the key messages that has come out is that we need to practice um, hygiene. We need to uh, practice cleanliness, washing our hands as often as we can. Now, this requires us to consume water. At the same time, we need to strike that balance of uh, preserving water. Uh, how do we do it, especially uh, during this time? It's quite a problem. In a way, that, uh, our water resources are already fresh. And we need a pragmatic way to reach the situation. So basically, that our first Ah, Dr. Masindi, the gremlins are at it again. Uh, you know, some people would say technology to tikoloshi. I don't know what is going on with our connection, but we'll see uh, if we can't uh, get the doctor back on the line. He's got uh, plenty that he'd like to share with us. Of course, he's got ongoing projects as well uh, that uh, encourage us and give us ways on how we can, um, of course, preserve water and at the same time make sure that we adhere to uh, hygiene practices, especially during this time as we're faced with this pandemic called COVID-19. It's uh, touched almost every corner of the world and uh, different countries and governments are trying to uh, find a way uh, to move past this. Uh, Dr. Masindi, I'm not sure if you can hear me now. I hope that you do. How do we strike that balance, doctor, between trying to preserve water uh, and, of course, uh, practicing safe hygiene? Yeah, I think we need to be very wise on how we utilize the water because we have this recommendation that we need to frequently wash our hands to prevent the spread of uh, coronavirus. Uh, what I would advise is that we need to close our taps when we massage our hands and make sure that the form is fully formed for that 20 seconds before we could rinse our hands. Then when the form is fully formed and uh, the, there's no jelly soap anymore and you rinse our hand, I think uh, that way we can minimize the utilization of water and try to preserve our water resources. In instances whereby it's uh, possible, uh, reusing the water so it's encouraged after disinfection to minimize the utilization of fresh water resources because uh, water is, is very rare and it's scarce and it's under stress. And uh, in circumstances whereby we don't need uh, water to wash our hands, it can be encouraged that we need to use uh, uh, sanitizers and uh, uh, disinfectants approved products to wash our hands and disinfect our hands, minimize the utilization of water and preserve our already stressed water resources. Doctor, we've seen how climate change has affected um, natural resources such as water. I mean, just in South Africa, uh, we've had a lot of drought spells that are, are ongoing. Um, the theme for this year's World Water Day is um, cl water and, and, and climate change. What can we do um, to try and, and, and mitigate, um, you know, how the weather changes has quickly um, depleted a lot of our natural resources. Yeah, I would say the president has uh, substantially done well in terms of uh, this initiative towards climate change mitigation. But what I would add on top of what uh, has been now uh, developed by the country in general is that we chiefly we need to educate the public about climate change. People don't know what is climate change, especially people at a lower level. Yes, at a policy level, we have this climate change and measures that we can put in place to mitigate the effect of climate change. So if we educate people, even from uh, the, the secondary level to tertiary level, and the laymen in our communities need to be educated about climate change. And also, in addition to that, we need to have incentives uh, towards eco-friendly technologies 
So this will also minimize the effect of climate change because climate change basically is the variability in climatic conditions over a given period of time. And there are a number of contributors such as emitting uh, greenhouse gases that can lead to global warming. Then in the longer run, in climate change. So if we try to minimize that, it's going to help us a lot in terms of preserving our water resources. Because if the temperature increases, we have higher rate of evaporation, and this affects our agriculture and agricultural production. We're not going to have food, cattle will die, then the supply of beef will be affected as well. Then food security in our country will be affected. The crops as well will not grow because water is one of the ingredients for crops to grow. So we need that as well. And opt for eco-friendly sources of energy to leverage or augment the current power sources that we have because we, the type of energy that we use is uh, dependent on the coal. And coal emits a lot of uh, greenhouse gases into the atmosphere, hence somehow contributing to climate change. I know the CSIR or an initiative from uh, the CSIR whereby the whole campus is being supplied by the solar energy, using solar energy. So that's an eco-friendly initiative. It doesn't pollute our environment. It doesn't contribute towards climate change. Actually, it minimizes the impact of climate change. And also the beneficiation of waste to our power generation facilities. Instead of wasting the heat, we can reuse it in other activities that require energy and the energy from coal combustion as well. And the encouragement of the deployment of eco-friendly technology. Not long ago, I think last year, late last year, we spoke about uh, a bus that uses battery to move. To, to support its mobility. So those kind of initiatives, I think, need to be subsidized. They need to be encouraged in our country. So we right. minimize... Uh, Doctor, we are running out of time, but very, very briefly, I want you to uh, please tell us about your project, uh, the Acid Mine Drainage, and uh, uh, what it is that you're currently doing. Uh, this project, uh, just to start with, I would say this project was funded by SASO, Back in the days when I was the investor of Vemba, what I realized is that uh, from the interministerial community which was assembled by the president in a fight against contamination of surface and groundwater with acid mine drainage and looking for viable technologies that can be used to, to treat acid mine drainage and reclaim wastewater, uh, it came to my mind when I was doing my geological investigation that we need to come up with a solution that would be used to mitigate the impact of acid mine drainage because the existing technologies, they produce sludge that cause secondary effects into the environment due to mission of heavy metals uh, from the land through contaminating surface and uh, groundwater. Then the problem resurfaces again. So my technology, what it does is uh, we call it is linked to the circular economy phenomenon whereby we don't generate anything into the environment. It's a zero liquid discharge phenomenon whereby we can reclaim drinking water from acid mine drainage, hence mitigating the impacts of climate change as well, the impacts of water shortages in our country. And the population is growing drastically. We need alternative sources of water. We need technology that can reclaim water. So this technology managed to reclaim water from acid mine drainage, which is rich in hazardous and toxic chemical species that can uh, somehow cause death living organisms and exposure. So we recovered a number of valuable minerals such as the hematite, the geotite, the magnetite, and if we sell those uh, minerals to the industry, they generate revenue, and that revenue offset the running cost of the system, hence making the technology self-sustainable. We have piloted it at CSIR uh, with a capacity of 3.5 kiloliter. In a day, if we run it continuously, it can give us 20,000 liters per day, and we oh, make it parallel. Doctor. Unfortunately, like I said, we do not have uh, uh, much time. But thank you so much uh, for just the information that you've been able to give us uh, this morning. No, thank you so much. That was uh, Dr. Bahangwere Masindi talking to us about uh, uh, the precious commodity that is water as it is World Water Day and uh, uh, also about uh, his project uh, that started um, a couple of years ago with uh, Sasol.